Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're ready to define the Lagrangian and to come up with an equation using that Lagrangian so that we can solve kinematics equations with it and kinematics problems. So what does that look like? Well, first of all, let's go back to the integral that gave us the action. So we learned that the action, which is defined as the integral over time of the difference between the kinetic energy and the potential energy, each defined as a function of time, if we take that integral from the initial time to the final time, that will be a minimum for the actual path taken. We still need to prove that, but at least we've shown you some examples that seem to indicate that that's indeed true. So now let's take what's inside the integral the difference between the kinetic energy and the potential energy, and let's define that as L. Matter of fact, we didn't define it that way. That was defined already a long time ago, and that's now called the Lagrangian. So, what does that signify? Well, let's figure out what that looks like. So, since L is equal to the kinetic energy minus the potential energy, that can be written as one-half mv squared minus the potential energy, which is m g y and then we make a substitution we know that dy dt is equal to the velocity and so that can also be written as y dot so instead of writing velocity we can simply replace it by y dot the derivative of y with respect to time so this can be written as one half m times the quantity y dot squared minus m g y now what we're going to do is the following. We're going to show that if we take the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to velocity, or y dot, and if we then take the derivative of that with respect to time, and subtract from that the partial derivative with respect to y of the Lagrangian, that that will be equal to zero. Now at this point, we won't give you the significance of that yet. That will come later, but at least let's assume that to be true. Well, let's see if that's indeed true when we do that to what we have here. So first of all, let's take the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to y dot. Notice there's no y dot in here, so the partial respect to y dot goes to zero for this point, portion. And for here, we can say that the partial of L with respect to y dot is equal to, take the, take the exponent up front, so we get 2 over 2 m y dot to the first power, and of course, that would be plus zero here. With other words, this is equal to m y dot. Okay, now let's take the derivative with respect to time of that. So now we take the derivative, the ddt, of the partial of l with respect to y dot, which is equal to the ddt of m y dot. And of course, if you take the derivative with respect to time of y dot, you get y double dot. This is the velocity, y double dot will be the acceleration. So this is equal to m y double dot. All right. Now let's go to this portion right here. Let's now take the partial of L with respect to y, which is equal to the partial of this respect to y. And now notice that this will go to zero because there's no y component in here. We simply get the derivative of this. So that would be equal to minus mg. Okay, so now let's plug that in here and see what we get. So now we have the ddt of the partial of L with respect to y dot minus the partial of L with respect to y equals zero, and this component was equal to my double dot, my double dot, minus, minus a minus mg equals zero. Okay, so this becomes my double dot uh, plus mg equal to zero. And then of course remember that y double dot is simply the acceleration and mg, well, let's see here. We can move that to the other side. We can write this as my double dot equals minus mg or I'm going to move that in the front. I'm going to write this as minus mg equals my double dot. And finally, I'm running out of room here, finally when we come up here, we can write this as minus mg equals to ma. Now ma, of course, is the mass times acceleration, 
that's the right side of the equation F equals ma, and the left side, well, mg is the force due to gravity, and minus means the force is acting downwards. So in essence, this is the equation F equals ma. So since this equation is the same as this equation, they're the same. And since we know that F equals ma is an equation we can use for all kinematics problems, therefore this equation can be used for all kinematics problems. And where does that equation come from? It's based upon the Lagrangian, which is defined as the difference between the kinetic and potential energy inside our integral called the action. So if we take this component right here and we treat it the way we did it here, to end up with this equation right here, essentially we've made F equals ma using the Lagrangian. So we can solve equations using a pseudo F equals ma, not needing to know the forces acting on it except the force of gravity. And from that we come up with a way of solving kinematics equations using energy instead of the force and F equals ma. And that is a much easier way to solve problems and you'll see some examples of that in the next few videos. And that is how it's done.